Welcome to Cheese In Depth. I'm Michael Landis, and today we have Redhead Creamery coming to us with Elise, and she's going to tell us all about the creamery, the farms, her history with uh, the dairy, and of course, we're going to taste some fabulous cheeses. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Elise. Elise. All right. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to spend some time with all of you and to feel like I'm uh, able to get out in the world a little bit as everyone is feeling. It's hard to, to feel like you're connecting with people without actually seeing them in person. So this is fun. Um, I am a first generation cheesemaker on my family's dairy farm. Uh, we have been, dairy farming is long in my blood and in my history. Uh, but cheese making is not. So I am the, the fortunate and the, the brave to start that uh, on our farm. And we've been making cheese for over six years now. And I'm really looking forward to sharing my story. So Redhead Creamery began uh, in 2014, was when the year that we made some of our first cheeses. And uh, we have evolved uh, really every single year ever since. Uh, cheese making has always been a dream of mine, as uh, especially being part of my family's dairy farm. Uh, it goes back to when I was probably eight or 10 years old, when I decided uh, that I wanted to be part of my family's dairy farm, but didn't really know in what aspect. Um, at that time, we were milking in a Thai stall barn and just, wasn't something I was wanting to do for the rest of my life to milk cows twice a day. So when I was in a senior in high school, I went on the National 4-H Dairy Conference trip, which is all the way in Madison, Wisconsin, and I'm in central Minnesota, so uh, a national trip to Wisconsin wasn't too long of a trek, but uh, we visited Crave Brothers Farmstead Cheese, which many of you are probably familiar with, and um, it was very early into their cheese making uh, for their business, uh, but seeing the milk being pipelined under the road from their dairy farm over to their cheese plant was this uh, bizarre concept to me. I didn't realize that was an option. And so that, that was like my aha moment. This is what I wanna do. I wanna make cheese. I want to be part of my family's business and, and see what happens. So um, I studied cheese making really ever since. Uh, went to the University of Minnesota for uh, food marketing and also learned a lot about dairy food quality and um, agricultural economics and uh, kind of really developed my own major knowing that I wanted to make cheese on my parents' dairy farm someday. Um, so my advisor at school advised me to study marketing more so than cheese making uh, because you can get as much cheese made as you want, but you need to get it sold. And how true that, that advice still is. Um, and we continue to learn from all the time. And so, um, hence my studying of food marketing. So um, we traveled from Vermont to Wisconsin uh, for my husband's job out of college, uh, but I found uh, jobs at several other cheese companies. So I had an opportunity to work at Grafton Village Cheese in Brattleboro, Vermont, and um, experience all there is to the Vermont cheesemakers, which is still thriving and uh, a place I look up to for artisan cheese making. And uh, got to do marketing with them as well as work in their retail shop and um, also developed some educational programming with local schools about agriculture. Uh, we then moved to uh, Wisconsin and I had the opportunity to then work for Crave Brothers and uh, helped with marketing there, as well as some of the offrenage with their wash drying cheeses and uh, worked with their fresh mozzarella and mascarpone. 
which are still my ultimate favorite fresh mozzarella and mascarpone has to be from Crave Brothers. But um, in between that time, I had the opportunity to uh, take classes at the Vermont Institute of Artists and Cheese, uh, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore, but uh, met a lot of awesome people in the cheese industry that are still in the industry now. And really opened my eyes to the hands-on portion of artisan cheese making prior to making it happen on my family's farm eventually. Um, then through that time, um, this would have been 2012, we ended up uh, moving home and home to my parents' farm and started working on getting Redhead Creamery going. And so um, you'll see in a picture later on the slides, proof of why it's called Redhead Creamery, besides myself. Uh, my, I have three other sisters and we're all redheads and uh, decided to take advantage of what annoyed us as children of <laughs> all being redheads and make it into something fun. So uh, Redhead Creamery was an obvious name for us. Um, so we got everything up and going in 2014. We were um, suddenly shut down for about three months due to some equipment failure. We had two cheese vats blow up on us and um, I've learned a lot about plumbing and equipment and um, all of those things since then. They always say that if you're an entrepreneur, you're a master of many things. And so definitely getting to learn all of those things. So um, ever since then, we have started, uh, we've been working on our cloth bound cheddar uh, that is part of the sampling today, as well as uh, our little Lucy Brie. And then we started making our North Fork, which is a whiskey washed Munster that we'll also talk about a little more and continue to evolve from there. I'm. I love to play with different cheeses. I love to incorporate um, other craft businesses that are in our, our neighborhood and utilize their products as well and continue to experiment and to play with the cheeses that we can make right on our farm and in our cheese plant here. So this is a, a photo of me when I was, I think eight at this point, my calf Lucky. Uh, and 4-H and uh, dairy was always a huge part of my life. And now that I have three children of my own, I'm excited for my now eight-year-old daughter who will get to participate in some of those fun 4-H events like I did. Here's the picture of uh, my other sisters. Um, I always incorporate them into any event that I can. Uh, they are not technically part of the business. Uh, my youngest sister, Maggie, who's on the left, uh, does do some marketing with me from afar. She lives in North Carolina, um, but we all enjoy each other's time and they all enjoy having some cheese at hand whenever, <laughs> whenever the option arises. This is uh, the front of our creamery. We added on the pergola just uh, two years ago um, to, to try to get people to sit out and explore and enjoy the outdoors of being right on the farm. We have a, a four acre pond uh, just on the other side, which is the east side of the cheese plant. And uh, it's just beautiful. And being able to enjoy that and uh, allow people to come and see where cheese is made, see the cows and enjoy all of that in one setting is really fun for us to share with others. This is just a brief snapshot of the inside of our cheese shop. Um, I always knew, and along with my parents, you know, we've always been very um, passionate about what we do and about agriculture and sharing that with others. So it was really important to us and still is to, um, to share what, we, what it is that we do on our dairy farm and at our cheese company. Um, we're very transparent and love to share how what our animals are doing, how we treat them, uh, the high quality products that we produce uh, with the milk that they produce, 
and um, and we do that through dairy farm tours uh, right at our cheese shop. And we try to share things uh, through social media as well. But in that shop, um, I'm right at the deli cooler in that photo, uh, but right on the back side of that are large viewing windows right into our cheese plant. So you can look right into our make room and watch cheese being made if we are by chance making cheese uh, at that given time. Um, we make cheese about three days a week at this point, and which is um, showing growth for us. There were phases where we were only making cheese once a week. So um, we're always trying to grow at a rate that goes with the demand that we're working at creating. Um, but the, the, the unique and um, benefit to us is that we are right on our farm and we can use whatever and how much milk we want. Uh, so on a day we're making cheese, we're bringing milk in fresh from the cows being milked at that time. So we start a cheese make day at quarter to five in the morning, receiving warm milk from our cows and we'll have fresh cheese curds or whatever it is we're making that day uh, by two or three in the afternoon. So really fresh, um, very efficient in the terms of uh, milk handling and also we preserve the quality of the milk by handling it um, real minimally. So just to talk a little bit more about the, the farm because it is a crucial part of who we are. Um, this is in the freestall barn of our dairy farm. So this is where all the milking cows are housed. Uh, I mentioned earlier we're in central Minnesota and right now I think the high temperature is nine degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, it is not warm and it's actually snowing today too. So uh, we do everything we can to create a comfortable environment for our cows. Because if our milking cows aren't happy, we are not getting a high quality and volume of milk that we need to survive as a dairy farm. Um, so we love giving dairy farm tours on the coldest and the hottest day of the year because we bring them into this freestall barn and the people can realize how comfortable it is when they stand in the middle of that barn. And it's called freestall uh, because you can't see, but behind the cows here, there are open stalls with sand bedding and the cows are free to roam, to eat, to drink, uh, to lay down as much or as little as they want. Uh, cows produce milk when they're laying down. So whenever you go in there and you see them laying, the whole barn laying down, that's a feeling of wonderful. <laughs> so uh, we either want them laying down or up eating or drinking. And we know then that we've got some happy cows in there. And you'll notice um, most of them are black and white. We have primarily registered Holstein cattle uh, with some of them being brown Swiss, the, the beautiful brown cows that you are used to in the Switzerland region. Um, mo mostly, be well, not mostly, but solely because uh, my sister Emily, my second sister, uh, wanted to show something different in 4-H. Um, and so my dad brought home a brown Swiss heifer, a, uh, an animal that hasn't calved yet, so would be a heifer versus a cow. And um, she ended up winning the champion brown Swiss at the 4-H show that summer. And we've continued to grow that brown Swiss herd ever since. I think we have 30 brown Swiss milking cows now at this point, just kind of fun to have that color mix in our herd. A lot of people, uh, you may have heard about um, milk quality and what that's like based on the genetics of a cow. Um, Holsteins, the black and white, are known for volume, uh, but my dad has been breeding them for high components as well since the mid 80s. So our Holstein cows have milk components, high fat, high protein, similar to a Jersey cow, which is known for having really high fat and protein in their milk. Um, that is an awesome benefit to me as the cheesemaker 
in producing a, a high quality and good yield in our cheeses and in our milk uh, by having that high fat and protein. And we get to see that, especially in the winter time when they're not burning their energy on keeping cool. Cows love cool weather and they produce the best milk during cool weather times. We're producing good quality, high quality milk, and then we're bringing really only about seven to 10% of the milk that we produce on our dairy farm um, out of 200 milking cows is used in our cheese plant. So the rest of that milk is getting sent to our local co-op that we're part of, and it's made into cheese uh, with Bongard's Creamery uh, for them. So uh, here is a picture of uh, milk that is setting for our brie. You can see that three of the totes have a smooth top that's basically because those three have had rennet added to them and they've been stirred and now they're setting. Um, the last two totes in the back will get, will, will add rennet at 10 minute increments so that uh, they're being set for the same amount of time before we hoop them into the molds. So uh, brie is different than cheddar in that it doesn't get cooked. Uh, the milk doesn't get cooked or the curd. So we can make it in these totes and we can get it hooped in a, a fast amount of time when the pH is set to where we want it. I don't know, this one I'm flipping brie. Um, this is our small aging room where our, our brie and um, some of our early washed rind cheeses are aged in prior to getting moved into the larger aging room. Um, we're kind of, you know, we were built to make a cheddar, but I knew I wanted to have a variety of cheeses in my plant. And so we don't have the, the most ideal aging transfer of rooms at our plant, but it works. So we do have this small aging room and then uh, we have a larger one that's mostly for cheddar and other cheeses that age a little bit longer. Um, but this room is primarily these soft cheeses and the fresher cheeses prior to being moved. So um, here is the photo of uh, prior to hooping our brie. And then we're also making cheddar on the side. Uh, something that we strive at doing is being as efficient as we can be by being a non-efficient artisan cheesemaker. Uh, so we are able to make two cheeses at a time uh, when we have enough people to help. And that allows us to, to basically produce two cheeses in one day, which is awesome. It's just the brie that's been uh, molded and these are double stacked hoops. So uh, we'll, we will mold the brie curd at one layer and then once that's full, we add on the next uh, next layer of forms, and then we'll add more curd again. And that once that settles overnight, it'll end up being the height of one of those layers. Uh, so if we only did one layer of those hoops, we'd have ourselves a mini, uh, I don't know, three ounce wheel of cheese. Uh, but these create about six ounce wheels of brie. Those keep our arms nice and strong. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of, you know, was all over the place a little bit with uh, talking about our, our cheese makes um, and happy to answer any questions later if anyone has specific ones regarding how some of the cheeses are made or anything. I think, I guess the, you know, what I didn't mention in the beginning is that the, the creamery and the farm ownership uh, is between my parents and my husband, Lucas and I, uh, and we, we all four own the farm and the creamery separately um, at different percentages, um, but so they run at, uh, as two different businesses. And um, that very first picture that I had on the screen with the van, shows um, our largest pivot for COVID uh, with doing a delivery service. And that's kind of our, 
uh, how my husband Lucas was able to, he really, really stepped up. I mean, he's helps a lot already, has a full-time job offsite, um, but he has been my cheese delivery man every week uh, driving this refrigerated van. So uh, that has really saved us in the year of COVID being able to bring cheese directly to people's homes. And we've been so grateful for people's support and encouragement as we continue to adjust and adapt and figure out how to keep all of this working and going.